Good evening uh, and welcome to our, our online Bible study. Uh, regardless as to who you are or where you come from, uh, where you normally do or do not attend church, we're, we're delighted that you've chosen to, to join us uh, this evening. Uh, this evening we're looking at the fifth of our, our six Bible studies when we, we think about what we do on a Sunday morning and, and why we do it. Um, and next week then will be the last week, not only of this study, but of our, our midweek for the summer. Um, next, next Wednesday will be our last midweek of, of the summer. I'm sure you need a break, uh, and I know that, that I do. Um, so uh, that's just a, a little bit of advance notice. Uh, Denise Torrens is with us. Good evening, Denise and Stephen and, and Ellie and Cora. Uh, Linda Johnson, uh, Linda and Mervyn. Uh, good evening. Uh, Helen Greer is watching. Good to see you, Helen. Uh, Julia is there as well. Um, I think Jacob's possibly with Julia. Uh, Glenda Armstrong. Glenda, good to have you with us. I uh, hope you're keeping okay, Glenda. Uh, and Brian Torrance. Brian and Judith. Um, I assume Grace is away back home. Um, but Michael and Catherine and Paul uh, are, are most likely still, still there. So uh, good to have the the Torrances uh, with us this evening. Uh, as we've already said, um, we're, we're, we're continuing on in our Encounter series uh, this evening. Uh, oh, Jennifer Knight has just arrived. Jennifer, good to see you as well. Thank you for, for joining. Good to have you with us. Um, so far in this, this series, we've thought about how and why we, we meet together, how we gather uh, our prayers of a confession, uh, the, the reading and preaching of, of God's word. Uh, and this evening we're, we're thinking about our response in worship. Um, church worship, e even in, in this format, uh, shouldn't be something that we simply come to. It, it should be something that we think about, something that, that impacts us, that, that we, we make changes in our life because of what we've heard. Uh, and that's all part of our worship. So tonight we're thinking about our response uh, to worship. Uh, and even as I say this, it's, that's not even strictly true. It's not so much that we respond to worship, but that our worship uh, to what God is saying is response. And, and so the response is very much part of our worship. If we're not responding to God's word, then we really have to ask questions as to whether we're truly worshipping God. Um, to hear from God and not to respond to him means there's something not quite right there. I hope, I hope that logic and that train of thought uh, makes sense and we'll maybe explore that uh, a little bit later on as, as things progress. Uh, but for now, we're going to open with uh, a song. We played this, I think, possibly um, either last last Tuesday, last Wednesday or, or Sunday, I'm not sure which it was, um, but I want to play it this evening just as we, as we begin. Speak, O Lord.
Thanks to, to Louise and Gillian for uh, recording that for us. Uh, Margareta McCulloch says, hi everyone. Margareta, good to have you with us. Hazel and Ivan, uh, all the way over in, in France. Uh, again, good to have you with us. I hope you're all well and, uh, and keeping okay. And uh, Alison and Ron Torrens, um, good to have you. I hope you had a good wedding anniversary. And... Uh, uh, it's good to have you folks with us as well, Alison and, and Ron. Uh, as with uh, other weeks, we're, we're going to, to think about uh, our, our, our response and we're going to begin with uh, some, some quotes that, that help us to... Oh, sorry, that's the completely the wrong thing that's happening there. Um, there we go, that's what I want. Uh, we're going to... We're gonna, um, read some quotes uh, that, that help us to, to think about uh, our, how we respond to God or some of the things maybe that go through our minds and our heads uh, as we, we, we do church. Uh, and so the, the first one, still not getting really what I want here. Um, there we go. Uh, and so the first one uh, is, I, I felt uh, a deeper sense of, of God's love. Have we, have we ever come away from, from worship? maybe saying something like that, or, or I prayed for God to help me to have a closer walk with him. Um, the, uh, the, the service maybe has, has moved us in, in that way, that, uh, that we, wanted to, um, we wanted to have that closer walk with, with God, um, that maybe we've resolved with, with God's help to be salt and light in the workplace, that that we've heard something maybe in the sermon or or in the Bible reading, and we thought, yes, we we want to um, we we want to to be salt and light. We want to talk more openly about God. Uh, do we come away saying that we felt a sense of joy or peace, um, or, or that we maybe need to do something about a broken friendship? We need to put something right. Um, maybe we come away. You know, do we come away from worship? very conscious about our sin uh, and ashamed of what we've done, but actually at the same time assured of, of forgiveness. Um, what about when we have communion? Um, do, we, do we grasp a deeper understanding of God? Do we, do we understand what's, what's happening in, in communion? Um, or, or maybe we realise that we've been looking at ourselves too much, that we're too inward looking and we actually need to, to reach out. I have to say that's one of the things I think I've realised over the last wee while, that, that we just need to be more outward looking. Um, uh, or, or maybe it would be interesting to know actually whether anybody has felt this during the lockdown. Have we felt a deeper sense of being connected as the body of, of Christ? How do we respond to God in in worship? Um, it's very important that we do that we do respond to God. That 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 worship should actually uh, affect us. Um, if if it's not affecting us, then then something's wrong. Something isn't right. Um, 
Uh, and do we ever think about the the different level of engagements that that we feel how, how we we interact with a service of worship often we tend to feel we've reached the high point of the service with the sermon there, there's a sense that that everything is building up to the sermon and then afterwards the rest of the service feels as though maybe it's petering out perhaps with the offering and the prayer of, of intercession, then that, that closing praise and benediction. So we kind of get to the, we've come for this thing, we've come for the sermon, that's the, that's the important bit, and everything else is kind of just tailing off. Is that how we view church? Um, the, the aim, the, the aim of, of listening to a sermon is not that we simply listen to what it says, but that we do what it says. James one twenty two talks about not only being hearers of the word, um, but being doers of the word. Is is that do do we come away from church understanding that we have something to do? Then that the that the end of the sermon really becomes the start of our response of of how we respond to God. And so as we, we leave worship and as we begin to think about, about how we live our lives outside the doors of the church, then it's important that we don't let all the, that energy we've put into participating in worship just dissipate and go away. It's important we don't lose our focus, that we, we don't start to think about a, a million other things that we need to do, that we have to find some way of holding on to what God has said to us and actually of, of figuring out and putting into practice the response that he, that he desires from us. I wonder if I was to ask tonight, what parts of the, the worship service do you find the, the greatest, or do you, do you think are most important, do you, do you think are most relevant to you, and what parts do you, do you kind of switch off in that has the least amount of engagement? And why is that? There are a variety of ways of responding to, to worship. There's, there's a variety of ways of responding to, to God's word. And we're going to watch a, a short video now that will help, think, help us think through some of those ways. every church service there is a revelation to us through God's word. However, in many churches today, after hearing God speak, our response is to simply sing a hymn and leave the church building. Though if a friend approached you with some very important news, perhaps test results or another deeply personal piece of information, our response wouldn't simply be to thank them and then leave. No, we would stay with them and comfort them and try to find the appropriate response to their situation. So why is our response in church any different? For the first 16 centuries in the Christian church, communion was the accepted response after hearing God's word. And today, many of our services end with singing a hymn and then a benediction. But is this the best way to respond to hearing God's word? There are different types of response upon hearing God's word. There are four different types of response in Acts 2 when Peter preaches his sermon to the people there. One of the first responses is the emotional response, and this leads on to the three other types of responses. The emotional response was an outward expression of grief where the people said to Peter and the other apostles, what shall we do? God's word can bring a variety of emotions within us, be it joy, sadness, grief, outward expressions of laughter, and sadness, and perhaps even conviction and grief. But they all lead on to the other responses. Another response may be a spiritual response where we pray to God and surrender our lives afresh to God. When we repent, we pass over our old habits and our cold hearts and ask him to bless us with a new one. It may be a symbolic response where we give an offering to God, indicating that we are willing to allow God to take control of our lives once again. It may be an action response where we are compelled to take action by the emotions that we have felt by God speaking to us. A common example is when we go out and take action to help others. In Acts 2, the people upon hearing Peter's sermon sold their possessions and split up the money, giving it to the poor. The most important part of a response, however, is its final destination. The final destination should be transformation in our lives. Yeah, 
the final destination of our response is is transformation in in our lives um yeah that is incredibly incredibly um, important we're we're going to turn to god's word we're going to read from acts 2 36 to, to 42 but before we do that uh, well, just before we do that, Elner, Elner Torrens is with us. Elner, good to have you with us. Uh, he says, thanks to Raymond. Uh, I assume Raymond knows who he is and he knows what he's been thanked for. So um, good to have you with us, Elner. Uh, hope hope all is well. We're going to read from God's Word. The, 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 you will need your own Bible. The words will appear on the screen, but they won't stay there for, for throughout this evening. So uh, you, it will be good to have a Bible that you can refer back to. Uh, and again, as with other weeks, uh, questions will come up on the screen, uh, hopefully in order. I seem to be having a little bit of difficulty coordinating my hands at the minute to get everything coming up at the right time. Um, and as those questions comes up, it, it, it really does help if you uh, give me some answers. Um, it, it's really very important that, uh, that that you do that because if you don't, then I, I'm going to struggle. So do do feel free to, to leave a comment and to answer questions. Um, and if you haven't done that before, could I encourage you to do that uh, tonight? But we're going to turn now to, to Acts, uh, to Acts chapter 2. And we're going to read from verses 36 to, to 42. Uh, let's read the word of God to, together. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and they said to, to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? But Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer. Amen. And we end our, our reading there. Uh, and I encourage you please to, to keep your, your Bibles open because uh, we're going to look back at this passage and, and it will be very useful um, to, to have your Bibles open uh, and to be able to 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 do that uh, my mom is with us um good to have you i uh, hope hope all is well in brantwood um and um yeah so we'll we'll start in we're we're thinking about our response in in worship how we respond to to god's word uh, and the first question this evening is on the, the screen uh, in what way does what happens in in verse 37 and in verse 37 is there in yellow in what ways does what way does what happens in verse thirty seven help us to understand a response to God's word that engages with the emotions of the moment? Okay, so so what is our emotional response then to God's word? And verse thirty seven reads, "When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do?' So we're asking really, what is our emotional response to to God's word?" Uh, according to, to verse 37. So, so this verse is describing an emotional reaction, an, an, an emotional experience. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. Listening and responding to God's word involves our emotions. Okay, it, it's it, taken on board um, scripture isn't just an academic experience uh, or task it it's an emotional thing it it, it gets to there, there there ought to be an emotional response to to what we read and what we hear in in worship 
It's not just something we think about. But in the same token, it's not just emotionalism because the emotional experience quickly moves on um, and the crowd follow up then with a question, what shall we do? Um, and emotions are, emotions are there and then they disappear. You know, we feel sad at something and then it disappears. We feel happy about something and then it disappears. And so our our response to God cannot just be an emotional response. But at the same time, it should still be an emotional response. So um, what is the emotional response in, in this verse 37? Um, nobody is volunteering so far. Um, hopefully somebody will, will, will be typing away on their keyboard to help me out here. What is the emotional response in, in Acts 2, verse 37? When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? There is an emotional response there. Um, and it's in that phrase, cut to the heart. You know, that is actually, it's here living here in Northern Ireland we we understand what that means cut to the heart you know people will say that they've been cut you know and it's maybe if they're embarrassed or or if they've been upset or if, if somebody has has touched a raw nerve um, people would say that they've been cut cut to the heart and so there's an emotional response here in that the people have heard about uh, Jesus this Jesus whom you crucified uh, Peter is very clear on that, very blunt, and um, and uh, the, the people are cut to the heart. Margreta, thank you. Oh, brilliant. Somebody is out there and, and answering. Margreta, thank you. Um, Margreta has talked about them being saddened, um, and, and that's absolutely right, Margreta. They are saddened. They, they, you could use embarrassed. You, you could use... Um, they, they're, 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 they're deeply hurt. Uh, and, and that is it. And, and whenever we realise who we are before God, you know, we ought to be saddened. We, we ought to be deeply hurt. On, on Sunday, we were looking at uh, Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel chapters 5, 6 and, and 7. And uh, it was all about the judgment of God. And we were reading some incredible words that, that God was saying he was going to do in Jerusalem. Um, things like, uh, you, you know, such destruction on the city that, that children would eat their parents and parents would eat their children. And, and in Ezekiel chapter 7, it talks about every leg being wet with, with urine. Um, and and as we thought that through and thought about the judgment of God and, and why God was so harsh in that judgment, we we talked about the, the fact that, that some of the things that we were reading about that, that, that God was going to do to the people was actually a mirror of what we had done to God. It, it reflected the hurt and the pain that we had inflicted on God. Um, and so whenever we realise what we have done to God, then we ought to be cut to the heart. That ought to sadden us. You know, it ought to bring a tear to our eye. Um, it, it's, it really is, um, you know, we, we should have a heartfelt response uh, to that. Uh, and so that is, uh, that is our emotional response. But, but there is also a spiritual response Whenever we we hear God's word, uh, we read it and we hear it being being preached. Um, and so the, the question that's now coming up on your screen and should be there very, very shortly is, uh, there it is. Uh, in what ways does the meaning of repentance help us to grasp the depth of inward change that responding to God's word often requires of us? So the, the folks in, in Jerusalem in verse 37, they asked, what shall we do? They, they were cut to the heart. They, um, my mum said that they were shocked at what they had done. Absolutely, they, they, they were shocked. Um, and they said, what shall we do? And Peter answers them in verse 38, which is in yellow on your screen. Peter replied, repent 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so the spiritual response that, that Peter is calling for is one of repentance. Uh, and that word repentance, you know, we're very good in, in this country, I think, in particular, bandying about this word repentance, repent and, and, and be saved. You know, we see the posters and all sorts of things. But, but that repentance describes a deep inward change of mind and heart and life. Okay, repentance is, is a deep inward change of our mind, so how we think, of our heart, how we react, how, how, um, our, our, when, we, when we read that word heart in the Bible, it's it really talking about our, our innermost being, so it's, it's a complete change in who we are, uh, and it's a change of life. Because we change how we think, and because our deep innermost being changes, so then our life changes. Uh, and that describes repentance. Um, Julia said, truly, turn, or she says, turn away from our sin. Yeah, Julia, that's, that's right. Um, but it's more than that as well. It, it, it's, it's, to, um, it's such a change that we, we we no longer desire that sin, that, that we become repelled by that sin, that we become repulsed by that sin. Um, and this this repentance is a response to the to the work of the Holy Spirit uh, within us. So the question we're being asked is in what ways does the meaning of repentance help us to grasp the depth of inward change? That responding to God's word often requires of us, and yes, Julia, it is to turn away from our sin, but it's 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 more. It's that turning towards God. It's that seeking to please God. Um, everything's turned on its on its head, um, and and that's what what Peter is is saying. So he he tells the the people. Um, this Jesus whom you crucified, it's your fault that he was crucified. Um, it is our fault that Jesus has been crucified. The cross is a measure of the, the harm that we have inflicted on God. And so it is our fault that Jesus has been crucified. Um, knowing that elicits that emotional response where we are cut, we are embarrassed, we are shocked, we are saddened um by by what we have done um and then the spiritual response to that is that we repent is that we we our, our lives are changed about they're turned about we we go in a different direction instead of going away from god we go towards god um and uh and that's the spiritual response margreta has said uh, no further punishment uh, and yeah, whenever we are forgiven, Margreta, um, that is that is key, and that is an important part of understanding forgiveness. That when we understand forgiveness, we understand there is no further punishment. That Christ has borne that punishment for us, in order that we don't have to. Um, and. And that is that is very very important, uh, and it's important that we as Christians understand that and learn then to let go of the guilt that we feel. So that emotional response of of sadness of being cut to the bone that we don't carry that with us forever and a day, that that response is is there to help us to repent in order that we can let go of the the pain that, that we felt in knowing what we've done to God. So so yeah, that is very, very, I hope that makes sense. If, if that's not making sense, somebody tell me it's not making sense and I'll try to explain it again. But but that idea that we are no, there is no further punishment is, is incredibly uh, important. And so that's, we've, we've looked now at um, our, our emotional response, our spiritual response, um, and we're going to look thirdly at a, a symbolic response. Um, 
the in in verse thirty eight, being baptized was the the outward symbol of the inward reality of change. So, um, there, there's the stuff on the screen. So so the the baptism was the sign that something had changed inside. Um, I hope that makes sense. So, so the, the crowd heard Peter preach. They were cut to the bone at realizing what they had done. They, they responded to that emotionally. They responded to it spiritually through their repentance. Um, and the symbolic sign of that was baptism. That was the, the symbolism of being washed and cleansed, um, a, a, a very physical symbol. Uh, an act that showed that something inside had had changed. Uh, I hope that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, please somebody leave a comment to say that that I have confused you, and I'll try to I'll try to clarify that. Um, the question that we're being asked to, tonight is: In what simple ways might we do something symbolic in response to a sermon that shows public commitment to be changed? By what we have heard God say. So, so what symbolism can we use in order to show the change that God has brought about in, in our life? As, as Presbyterians, very often we are baptised as, as infants. We are baptised on uh, the basis of our parents' faith. Uh, and so that public, um, that public baptism that, that these new converts uh, experienced isn't necessarily something that, that all of us are, are able to do because we've been, been baptised as children. We believe that there's only one baptism. So in, wh in what other ways can we, can we show an outward sign of an inward change? Um, any any thoughts? Any any comments? Or is everybody now left just a little bit stumped? Um, what are the some of the outward signs that that we can use that display that that innermost faith, uh, that that innermost change? Well, certainly um, when we come to take our first communion, when we become communicant members, certainly if you're in the Presbyterian tradition. Uh, and we could become uh, communicant members. That can be a very public opportunity to to confess our faith in in Christ, uh, and that shows that something has changed with within us. Uh, I, I know Linda and and Mervyn are are from a Baptist uh, uh, background uh, and attend Calvary Baptist. Uh, and I know Linda, you're heading there on Sunday, and you're very concerned that that I wonder where you've gone to, but I. I I, I'm delighted that you're going back to, to, to Mersey Street on, on Sunday. I think that's, that's wonderful. Um, and in the Baptist tradition, they, they do hold to that, that believer's baptism, um, which now allows uh, for the, some of the symbolism that we're talking about. But as Presbyterians, sometimes that's, that's closed off to us. Um, my mum says, when given the opportunity to speak of God's love, yeah, you, you can, opportunities to speak to people. Um, opportunities to, to actually maybe give your testimony in church to, to say, actually, this is what's been happening in my life. Um, and, and in a very simple way uh, of being able just to tell people what's, what's been happening. Um, it can be in communion, you know, in, in how we take communion and just, um, just allowing the maybe taking it for the first time or, or or allowing that rich symbolism of communion just to to mean a little bit more to to, to us uh elner is saying loving all of our neighbors absolutely you know um i couldn't agree with you more elner um showing christ's love is, is a fantastically practical way of uh of letting people see that there's been an inward change in in our lives uh, and that's incredibly important. So, so thank you for that, Elner. Um, and, and there are things like that. You, you know, another opportunity is if there is opportunity in a service. Now, it might not be for a while with all this social distancing. But if there's opportunity in a service, maybe to, to receive prayer ministry, to come forward and to be prayed with. 
you know, that again is is something that is rich in symbolism. The the, the laying on of hands and, and just having somebody pray with you is yeah, it's 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 dealing in a spiritual reality, but it's also incredibly symbolic um that that something significant is is going on in in our lives and so there are lots of ways uh in which we can we can do things that that symbolize and demonstrate that there has been a a significant change in in who we are and and what god has been doing in in us we're we're going to then move on uh, and thank you for your comments and um, they're they're great and wonderful and and very helpful so so thank you and I appreciate this is a difficult medium uh, in which to interact but but you're doing well so so thank you um we're we're going to move on and and think about uh, another response and it's the an action response that that we actually do something um that something very practical, something um, that that involves us as so actually doing doing things. We're asked to look at verses forty two and forty seven. Now they're going to come on the screen uh, very shortly. So so if you if you're struggling with your Bible, they will be on the screen. Uh, and if you do have your Bible, it will be helpful to look at them. So we're going to look at forty two and forty seven. And as we read through verses forty two and forty seven. I want you to pick out the practical ways in which responding to God's word changed the inward and outward facing life of the church community. So, so really that a very wordy way of saying, as we read these verses, what are the practical ways in which the life of the church was changed? So Peter preaches in Jerusalem. He, he tells the people, Listen, Jesus Christ was actually the Son of God. He was actually the Messiah that you were waiting for, and you crucified him. There was um, there there was an emotional response to that as the people were cut to the heart. They they then asked, "What should we do?" Uh, and Peter said, "You need to have a spiritual response. You need to repent and be baptized and be forgiven." and and that baptism then was a symbolic response that, yes, they had repented and something has changed. But there is also an action response. And so as we read now verses 42 and, and to 47, let us pick out the, the actions that changed the church. And, and just as you read those actions and as you see them, leave a comment as we read this. So we're going to read it together and just leave a comment at the, the actions that you, you see uh, happening with, within the church. I hope that makes sense. So we begin at verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Okay, I'm going to leave that text on the screen. Uh, and we're looking for the actions, um, the things that the church did in response to what Peter was saying. Uh, so Julia has said they devoted themselves to, to teaching and to, to fellowship. Absolutely right. That's at the very start of that passage. Julia's on a roll. Uh, she said they, they shared possessions. And, and that's actually a theme uh, of the book of Acts. Uh, Margreta has picked up on that as well, saying togetherness and sharing. Um, uh, and it's, it's not just sharing, you know, the change in their pocket, if you like. We're, we're told that they sold property and possessions in order to give to anyone in need. So it was very intentional 
you know, it was very much, uh, this required commitment. Uh, and so that's, that's what they did. Uh, anything else, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the, the believers were together and had, had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. And so there you have another action. They're, yep, Julius cottoned on to it. They, they met together on a daily basis. Um, they broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And, and so they had meals together. They, they, they enjoyed one another's company. It, it, Margreta has said communion. It may well have been communion, Margreta. Um, might, have been, might well have been. Um, the, the breaking of bread may simply just have been a meal together. Uh, and so they, they may simply just have, have been meeting each other um, for dinner. You know, um, that, that might be what they have been doing. Um, my mama said signs and wonders. Yes, the apostles, they, they certainly continued that ministry and performed signs and, and wonders. And that was uh, very much the apostles here were, were doing that. Um, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And so they, they, they worshipped together. Um, they, they spent time together. They worshipped together. They did church together. They did life together. Um, it, it wasn't just that, that they met once a week. Church for them wasn't once a, a once a week event. It, it was life. It, it was much more fluid. Um, it, it, the, the, the idea of what we have of, of meeting sort of between, between 12 and one or 11 and 12 or, or whatever time we meet, that would have been alien to this church because they just did life together. They were a community that did life together. And maybe that's something that we need to, to get back to. Um, the mum says they, they grew in number. Absolutely. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Um, and, and Margareta says they, 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 they enriched their, their wealth. Yeah, there was that, that wealth became very much a community wealth rather than a personal wealth. Um, and so you can see there what the, the church was, was doing um, and, and, how, and how they responded. And so we have uh, we have different responses. And so as we come to church week by week, as we sit around Bible studies like this, as we meet with one another, there should be responses. We should be having an emotional response. There should be something within us that is moved by what God is saying to us. Um, we should be happy, we should be sad, we should be laughing or tearful. There, there should be an emotion there. We are not robots. There should be an emotion. Um, but as well as that, there should be a spiritual response. You know, just because we are already Christians does not mean to say that we don't need to repent. Uh, and so we should leave worship knowing that we need to repent of something. We should you know, part of our worship should be repenting of those things that, that God is highlighting in our lives. There should be symbolism in our response. Something that says to the world, look at me because God has changed me. The baptism was very much, look at me, I'm being washed by God, I'm being cleansed by God, I'm being changed by God. And, and so there should be something in us, and, and maybe that look at me is a bad phrase, but I hope you understand what I mean. There should be something that says, look, something has changed in my life, and, and this signifies that change. But also what we do and how we live, how we view the things that we have, how we view our job, our families, our, our wealth, our homes, our houses. All of that should change. Our actions should change. 
And so as we move into the, as our sermon comes to a close, and as we move into that final part of the service, really it's not about winding down and starting to think about will we get out for 12 o'clock or will we get out for one o'clock or, or will the dinner be burned? It's not about winding down. It's about gearing up and it's about getting ready to go forward with God into the rest of our lives. It's about our, our personal circumstances being changed. Our home lives being changed. Work being changed. The social situations in which we gather being changed. Those things with which we spend the most of our time and the relationships we have with other people being changed. And so that, that last part of our worship service shouldn't be thinking about Sunday lunch. It should be thinking about change. And what change is God calling us to in our lives? We should be leaving church challenged changed, encouraged, enriched, instructed, inspired. We, we should leave church repenting and renewed. We should leave church responding to the encounter with God which we hopefully have had through our worship. I wonder, how do we leave worship? Do we leave Worrying about the t-shirt the minister wore. Or the lack of colour. Or do we worry about the length of the sermon. Or the fact that we didn't like the music. Or do we leave thinking about the encounter we've had with God. Because God is above and beyond all of those things. God is above and beyond whether I'm a good preacher or not. You know, the world's worst preacher, God will still encounter you through. The question is, are we looking for what God is saying? And are we willing to respond? We're going to draw tonight to, to begin to draw tonight to a close. And, and as we draw it to a close, don't start to think about who's putting the kettle on next. You know, um, or should I have that chocolate biscuit or or whatever? Draw tonight to a close by asking, how is God wanting me and you to respond to what we've heard? And to help us think about that, we're going to sing together. I will offer up my life.
So how are some of the ways that we can respond? We can think of ways in which we can better prepare for and participate in listening to a sermon with with an ear to the response that it might be calling uh, for. Um, you, you know, if if you know the sermon series and you know the passage that's coming up, have you read it? Have you thought about it? You know, do, do you struggle to, 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 to concentrate and to keep going? And, and, and would it be easier, therefore, if you took a pencil and paper and maybe jotted down a few notes, a few things that would would help us to to remember what what's been said um you know it's we, we don't just need good preachers we need good listeners and so what will help us to listen um we could think about whether our response to what god is saying um tends to be more emotional or or thoughtful um uh, we, we could think through how we could give a fuller expression to that full range of, of biblical responses in, in Acts 2. Maybe actually we're, we're good at the emotional response. Maybe we, we actually are very moved in church. But we're not so good at the action. You know, do we need to make a commitment? Actually, there would be some changes because of this and commit to those changes and to be held accountable to them. Think about what you do immediately after church. And does it help you to to, to fasten on to what's been said? Does it help you to, to, to fasten down the, the appropriate response to God's word? Or does it distract you from that? You know, what, what, what do you do immediately after church? Do you have time to, to sit and to think and to figure out what your response is? Or is it just out the door and home and onto the oven? Or, or are you so, f- you know, caught up in having a cup of tea and coffee, which, which is a great thing. You know, we'll miss it over the next wee while. But have we become so fixated on that that actually we've forgotten to reflect on on what's been preached you know can we make better use of the music we use in church um in order to to help us help us with that you know what are we what are we doing in order to try and ensure that we are responding to god's word Folks, thank you for for joining with us uh, this evening. As I said, next week will be our last Wednesday night. Uh, Hopefully it's our last Wednesday night online and and by the time we start up again that we will be able to meet uh, in our own churches and and under our own roofs and with our our own ministers. That that really will be a good day. But but as we close in in prayer um, and then play our final song, um do think about your your responses to to not just tonight but to maybe some of the other things you've heard over this lockdown period let's pray together father we do thank you for your perfect and unerring word thank you that it is holy thank you that it is a double edged sword that that cuts right lord between spirit and marrow Thank you, Lord, that your word is is useful for for teaching, correcting, rebuking and encouraging. And we pray that your word would be all those things to each of us. But we would ask that you would train us and teach us and enable us to take the time to, to actually think about what's being said. To think about what you are saying. And to respond to that, Lord, to take it on board and to respond. Lord, be at work in our lives, changing us, but but make us willing participants in that. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
And we're going to end now very appropriately with Jesus. All for Jesus. Thank you.